What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I'm here tonight with a review for Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, Season 6, Episode 4, and the episode was titled Dogged Out. So far, we are five episodes into this season. It's not really giving me what I, I particularly get from Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, but without further ado, you guys, we're just going to go ahead and just jump right into the video. It might not be as long because the episode just really was not that much. Alright, you guys, so the episode. The episode actually picked up where it left off at. You guys remember last week's episode ended with Paris, Zells, and um, Brittany B getting into it with one another. And, you know, she was telling him to leave, and Paris was like, she ain't leaving, go get in your Uber. The fact that she said Uber three times, and probably more than that, it was like, you, you realize that, one, she's not catching what you're saying, and two, it's overkill. So, you, you say it once, Ha, 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 funny. Say it multiple times. Okay, girl, really? You are reaching at this point. So, eventually, Zell and Paris do end up leaving. But it became a whole big spectacle at that point. And I'm just like, really? You could have just... There was a lot of things she could have did. She, you know, she could have... It was a lot of shit she could have did differently. But that's pretty much it for that thing. So, then we do see a scene... So right, for, so from the beginning, I'm just gonna put the shit that was not very interesting together. So we see little Lyrica. So we see her, you know, she is in the car with Baby Ocean, and then we see her. She pull up in front of um, Big Lyrica, which I did not recognize. That was Big Lyrica with the hair. I'm like, wait a minute, who the fuck is this? And then I looked at him like, oh, that's Big Lyrica. So she's leaving Big Lyr She's leaving Little Ocean with Big Lyrica because she has decided that she's going to go out on these last two tour dates with uh, Clutch and Pearls. And T Pain. You know, after she had that conversation with K Michelle, she's thinking about her music. I'm like, okay, Lyrica, if you say so. We're gonna move on. Alright, so more with the nothing shit of this episode. Mickey Monday. We see Mickey Monday. He's out on a date with um Slick Woods. Um, you know, he's talking about Slick's accomplishments, how she is, you know, work she's a Fenty girl. She's done Machino. She's done so much stuff. They have similar background. She's 22 years old. She's a, you know, she's a, a she's a, a big time model. You know, I'm, I'm have to agree with something that, I, and I'll talk about it in a little bit. Well, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now. It just feels kind of weird to me with Mickey Monday and Slick Woods. I don't want to say he's cloud chasing, but it just feels like this dude is cloud chasing off of her, her you know. Her celebrity, because everybody knows who Slick Woods is at this point, because of Re more so because of Rihanna. So you know we know she was the model that was pregnant and went into labor and then had the baby after that fashion show for Rihanna. Yeah, you know I, I just feel like he's cloud chasing. To be quite honest with you. Um, so he's also talking about some stuff that's coming up with him. You know, I think he had said he had a music video he was doing, and then he was talking about this showcase with Jason Lee which we'll get into that showcase in just a little bit. But that was basically it for Mickey Monday. And we all move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So for the dumbest storyline of this whole fucking episode. So we see Ray and Prince Prinky. So, you know, Ray is get telling us about all the dogs they have. Bugatti. We got, um, what's the other one's name? Bully something. It's just a lot of dogs that they got. And one of them was, and you know, little Bugatti, he was dog napped. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, me and Prinky, we left him with my mom and my dad, and they left the door open, and, you know, he ran out the door. And then, you know, um, Princess is showing him a video. So the video was very grainy, for one. So here's my, and th 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 this whole thing right here is so, so stupid. Because, you know, Princess feels like when it comes down to it, if it was any of Ray's other dogs, he'd be he'd be out there, you know, leading his search party to find a dog. But with his Bugatti, he's not out there doing that. And she's blaming Sonya and she's Sonya and her poodle, and she's blaming um, his dad because the, the, again, they left the door open. But like I said, the video, the video is this this whole thing is so stupid to me because yes, she said they left the door open. The dog ran out the door. There was a man coincidentally sitting outside of the house and a dog just ran up to him and he just took the dog. And then Ray said his dad saw the man 
and he went out there after him, but by the time he got out there, you know, little uh, Bugatti was gone. So I'm like, okay, we got camera footage. Yo, dad saw it. So nobody has this man's license plate information. Like none of that shit made sense to me. I just like, okay, this is a storyline and it's letting us know it's time for Ray and Princess to leave up in hip hop. Like completely, cause really a dog, I, I mean, I, I get it. I, I had, a, I had, I've had two dogs in my lifetime. And one of them, he actually was, he actually was dog napped because, you know, we would leave him, we would leave him on his little chain outside during the day. And, you know, and actually he would run away from me. He would run away. But, you know, he would, I, I think he used to play with the dogs in our neighborhood because every night he knew what time we would come home. Me and my mom, he knew what time we would come home from work. Well, she would come home from work and I would be with her from school. And we would be home about nine o'clock. So he would be down the street playing with the little other dogs in the, in the neighborhood. But as soon as he hear our, he, as soon as he would see and hear our car, he would come running home. And he'd come running, he first, he, you know, my mom would be the first one to open the door. He'd run over to her, actually he'd come to me. He would come to my side of the door, but I wouldn't open the door for, I was messing with him. And I wouldn't open the door for him. So then my mom, she would open her door and he'd run around there to her. And then, you know, she'd go up to the porch and he follows him behind her, but he notices I'm not with her. So then he'll come back to my door and he'll just sit there until I get out. And then when I get out, he'll, you know, he'll follow him right in behind me. But there was this one night we got home and my dog wasn't there. So we just assumed that someone actually had taken my dog. Because at this time, actually, actually, you know, when we noticed that he would run away and come home at night, my mom would leave him outside and she would have his chain on him. You know, he would, she would have him his chain on him. So we assumed that someone went in our backyard and stole him. But this was in the 90s. No cameras were around, so we never, ever found my dog, unfortunately. We, we think we did find my dog, but we weren't going to go in somebody else's yard because I know it was my dog. But that's neither here nor there. But, um, yeah, just none of this stuff made sense to me with them and his dog. So then we see later in the episode, Ray has offered $20,000 to find a dog. And I'm like, damn, I wish I was in California. I would have found any dog for you. And we would have named him Bugatti just so we, I can get that $20,000. So everyone is there. Ray's dad is there. You know, some of Ray's friends are there. Paris is there. April is there. I don't know why everybody was there. And then they also had a fucking psychic there. And a the psychic is telling him, telling them where the dog is. But y'all motherfuckers are still in this park looking for this dog. This shit was so fucking stupid to me. So motherfucking stupid. All right, so next we got K. Michelle. So K. Michelle, she is doing this uh, photo shoot for this female lifestyle brand that she has. You know, it'll be like some cooking stuff. It'll be a lot of shit. I, I, I really won't listen to it, to be honest with you. Sorry to tell you guys. But we see that Britney B is there. And Britney B is there to talk to her about everything that happened at her mixer that she had where Paris showed up out of nowhere. And then, you know, she's telling K. Michelle that, you know, I asked her, did she come in her Uber? She came and she was like, wait, you asked her, did she come in an Uber? She's like, yeah. And K. Michelle was like, oh, fuck, why would you do some shit like that? And then K. Michelle said on her interview, like, I don't need no fucking backup. K., we know that. I don't know why Brittany B. feels the need to take on everybody else's beef with somebody else. Like, it's ridiculous as Difa, and it just makes her look petty and stupid. For real, for real. That's all it does. So then, you know, she's talking about um, April and Monique. She's giving Monique credit for her singing, but she's shading the shit out of April singing. Now, is April singing good? It ain't the best. Um, and then, you know, came and she was talking about, well, you know, at Jason Lee's uh, showcase, L Little Lyrica is going to be there performing. Why did she have to mention Little Lyrica? Because that gave Britney B free reign to talk about how fake she is. I'm like, oh, my God. Will you please, like Elsa said, let it go, let it go, let it go. That shit was just irritating the fuck out of me. God, it, it was just irritating the shit out of me. And it's going to irritate me even more when I get to the showcase. Huh. Fuck. All right, so next we got April. So she's having, a, uh, I guess, a pajama party with uh, Zell and Paris. And they're talking about Britney B. And they're also calling her Barney B. 
And I'm sitting there looking at Paris like, I know you of all people ain't called nobody Barney when you're shaped like Baby Bop. Baby Bop. And then, you know, they're telling April how, you know, Britney B was so shady, talking about, you know, Uber this and Uber that. And she's like, oh, she was being petty. Yes, she actually was. So then this gives April free reign to talk about um, Britney B again and how, you know, she interacted with her at, you know, when Monice was singing with her cousin last week. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about some of this shit already. Like, oh, gosh. Some of these storylines are draining. <clears throat> and the most draining of all of them is April's. All of April's storylines are draining. <clears throat> <clears throat> Gosh, give me y'all. April is so insufferable. So then they go to sit down. And they notice some big ass shoes. And I'm like, you know, what size does little uh, Omega wear? She's like, oh, those aren't Omega shoes. Those are uh, teeny fizzle pop shoes. And they're like, What? She's like, yeah, you know, he's leaving his stuff here while he's on tour. We all know otherwise. Monique said that that ain't the case. When he went on the run, he left. Where did he leave his stuff at? Did he leave his stuff with his parents or did he leave his stuff with her? I forgot where he left his stuff at, but he didn't leave his stuff with April. That's just a story on that they've cooked up. And then, you know, she's talking about, um, well, he hasn't inserted his dick in me yet. And Zell was like, what, yet? Yes, yet. Which we know that that has since changed. God. I can see why Omarion left this girl, like, for real. She's insufferable as fuck. So then we see Teeny Fizzle Pop and Book on tour. Omarion refuses to show his likeness, and we haven't saw uh, Raz B yet. So, you know, um, Fizz is talking about, Teeny Fizzle Pop is talking about how he wants to invite April to one of the shows. And I'm like, what? Why would you invite Omarion's baby mama, who... He has no dealings with on a tour that oh god I cannot I'm I'm I'm, I'm over it <clears throat> so fucking over it like my whole question is with April like so you're best friends with Teeny Fizzle Pop who's also in the group that Omarion your baby daddy's in so why aren't you close to Bug and Raz B? Scratch Raz B, but most so. Why aren't you close to Bug as well? <clears throat> so then, you know, Teeny Fizzle Pop is talking about how Marion really hasn't said anything to him. Why should he? Like, he don't fuck with her, he don't fuck with you. He just got to get some money. So what is there to say? And then April FaceTimes him. I'm like, oh. This shit is irritating. And then out of nowhere, out of the clear blue sky, we see Marcus Houston shows up. <clears throat> so we find out that Marcus and Boog are cousins and they have a company together. Which I know some of them, I know that they've done some stuff together. Like that movie that Paris was in last year with Amara La Negra. I know Boog was behind that movie. Um, I can't remember what the name of the movie was. It was a BET horror movie. And then I know that there was a movie that they did with Drea that was in it a few years ago. Can't remember the name of that movie. So they've done some movies that have been on straight to TV. Like I said, the one that Amara La Negra and uh, Paris was in last year was a straight to uh, BET movie that was uh, produced by Bug and um, I guess Marcus Houston. So Bug is telling, you know, Marcus that there is a market for an amateur to go on tour. I'm like, oh. And they talking about the Throwback Thursday tour that they having. I'm just like, man, when I saw that lineup, because it's what, it's immature... It is day 26, it's J Holiday, it's B5, and it's Ray J. Anybody going to see that tour? Because I won't be me. I will keep my money in my pockets. But Marcus is like, you don't know if that's going to work out. I don't know if it's going to work out either. I don't know if y'all going to make any money. Have the tickets even gone on sale yet? Like, damn. Because nobody's talking about that tour like everybody was talking about the, um, the uh, Millennium Tour. But if you're going, have fun. Okay, you guys, and then lastly, this showcase that Jason Lee has. So, you know, K. Michelle is talking to Brittany B, and then they talking about a little, you know, Jason Lee comes in and they talking about a little Lyrica. And like I said before, Brittany B needs to let that shit the fuck go because she's telling Jason Lee that she want to book her. 
you know, this is for up and coming artists and she's an old has been or never been or whatever she said. And I'm just like, oh God, girl, please let this shit go. It is not that deep. It is not that deep. So then we see Little Lyrica and Closing Pearls, they show up together hand in hand. And then when they go in there, you know, Penguin, AKA Jason Lee speaks to uh, Closing Pearls. They're like, man, don't speak to me, you full of shit. So then, you know, um, they have a conversation about how messy Jason is. Jason does admit that he was messy. And then Clutching Pearls is like, hey, man, he don't want his wife to open up for nobody. He wants her to go last. Okay. Whatever. And then we see Trisha, you know, because we see Mickey Monday perform. He's there with Slick Woods. We see Brittany B perform. Not talking about the performances because I didn't really give a fuck about him. A little lyric perform. Didn't give a fuck about those performances. Um, so, yeah, you know, Mickey Monday, like I said, Mickey Monday is there. Trisha shows up with her annoying ass voice, sound like one of them Kardashians, only a little bit more whinier. And, you know, she speaks to Slick Woods, but it was very fucking shady. And I'm like, well, damn, bitch, why you gotta be so shady to her? You're married. Why are you worried about this girl and him? You still want him, don't you? You still want him. So, you know, then we see Apple. Apple takes Britney B out to talk to Little Lyrica. So, Britney B tells Little Lyrica, like, Yo, I've heard that you tell people that you didn't really care about, you didn't fuck with me, we ain't cool, you got issues with me, whatever. Lil Lyrica says, no, nah, I ain't got no issue with you. And they hug it out. But she says, well, who you do have an issue with is my friend Sia. So then Sia comes over and they talk about what the issue is with, what the issue is between each other. And ultimately, it sounded like they were talking about who was friends with Lil Lyrica and who's not friends with her. Dumb as fuck. Because y'all got to be in y'all 30s or, or, or y'all got to be at least in y'all 30s. Arguing about who's friends with who and who's not friends with who. Dumb as fuck. Huh. But you guys, that was the episode. Tell me how you guys feel about it. Like it. Like the video. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button and share the video with your friends. And um, I will see you guys later. Tomorrow, Greenleaf is back. I'm so excited for season four of Greenleaf. See you then, girl. See you then, you guys. My bad.